YouTube, welcome back to Jack's Photo and Tech. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a long while uh, since I was able to produce a video. But hey, I'm back and I wanted to create a video today for you, uh, for all you tech-minded people out there. And today we're going to be looking at, I thought we would talk a little bit about uh, computer networking. So this is more for the network administrators out there, uh, people that are getting into the business of uh, technology administration. And this is just something I'll, I've been working on with my students. So I thought I would do this and uh, show you guys around a little bit about how to set this up. So what we're talking about today is we're going to go ahead and look at a DHCP server. All right, so we're going to take a server and I'm in, this is Cisco Packet Tracer. Now, if you've never used Cisco Packet Tracer before, it's a free application. All you have to do is go to uh, cisco.com or better yet, go to skillsforall.com. Create yourself a free account and download Cisco, Cisco Packet Tracer. It allows you to create a bunch of networks and do a lot of different things virtually before you have to buy actually real uh, networking gear. So let's go ahead and start here. We're going to start with a server. We're going to bring that up here on the screen. And I'll blow this up so we can see what's going on here. All right. So there's our server. And next we're going to throw up a, a network switch. The switches we use in class is the 2960 switch. All right, the 2960. Now, by default, the 2960 switch, all of the VLANs in here are set to VLAN 1, okay, all the ports. So we're going to click on that. We're going to go ahead and take a look at that right now. So let's go into the CLI. And whoa, that's too small there. Let's reset that. So if we go to uh, our preferences, we go to font. And we're going to change the font here to something a little bigger so you guys can see what's going on. We'll say 17. Okay. All right. Let's open that back up. There you go. Now you can see the font, right? You can see what's going on. Okay. What we want to look at, first of all, is on a Cisco switch. Okay. There's some basic commands that you have to know. And I'll be showing you these commands as we go along with this series of videos here for Jack's Photo and Tech. So what we're going to look at first is enable. Okay, so we're going to enable the switch. You see here where it changes now to a hashtag, okay, or a pound sign, whichever you want to refer to that as. What we're going to do now is do show VLAN. And I just wanted to show you here on if you do a show VLAN. Right now, every single port, okay, is active and they're all on VLAN 1. Okay, the next thing you want to look at though is we want to make sure that VLAN 1 is active itself. So we're going to do a show run. We're going to look down here. I'm just using the uh, space bar. Right now you can see a VLAN 1 is actually shut down. Okay, so VLAN 1 is shut down. The interface is. But the switch will still function for you as a normal switch, just like an unmanaged switch. So we don't need this turned on right now. I just wanted to show you that all the ports are just set to VLAN 1. Okay. All right. Now, what I wanted to teach you today was you can go into this server model here. And under services, we're going to go to DHCP. Now, this is the DHCP pool. And as you can see here, right now it's turned off. We're going to go ahead and turn that on. And the default gateway, there's really none at this point. But we're going to say 192.168.10.1. The DNS, uh, we're going to make that same, 192.168.10.1, because we'll use our server right now as the gateway. The starting IP address, what is the starting address we want to hand out to everybody? 192.168.10.10. Okay. What is the subnet mask? Well, we're going to do a class C address. Now, even if you're not familiar right now, with some of these terminologies, you will be by the end of these sessions uh, that I'm creating here for Jack's Photo and Tech. All right, how many number of users, how many hosts do we want? Let's say 50, okay? We're gonna click on Save. And when you click on Save, you'll see here that it actually saves the default pool, which you can't delete this default, this server pool. But it saves that and it, it's prepared now to hand out IP addresses, all right? So, that makes it very, very simplistic. But what we first got to do here is we have to go back. We have to go to IP config. The server needs an IP address. 192.168.10.1. .1. 
When I hit the tab key, you'll see it defaults to 255, 255.255.0. If you're not familiar with that, that is a class C address. 192.168.10.1, we'll just use the server as our gateway, as well as 168, as well as our DNS server, okay? Now, a lot of my students do uh, mess up on this because they forget to give the server an IP address. If you do that, the server cannot be found, right? So it can't serve anything. All right. So now what we have to do is we're going to take this server and we're going to connect it to the switch. All right. To do that, if you click the little lightning bolt down here on your packet tracer and you go over to the solid line. Okay. That's a straight through cable. Just you can see it looks like a cable now. Just click on the server and go to fast ethernet. Click on the switch and we'll go ahead and plug our server into port 24, all right? So it's very easy to do this stuff. Uh, there's there's very uh, certain, there's certain ways we do things that we tell our kids we teach the industry standards. You always teach everything to industry standards, okay? If you hit the fast forward button here, you'll see where both of those triangles turn green. That'd be like the lights on the network cards. So they're both active and ready to go. Okay. So go back here. I'm going to hold my control or my command key down and I'm going to go up here and I'm going to drop a couple computers. Okay. Just like so. Okay. Now we got three computers on there. If I hit the escape button, that will go away. We're going to go ahead and we're going to set these three computers up on this switch. Okay. Very, very simplistic. So let's go here. Again, I'm just going to hit the command or the control key. I'm going to click and go to fast ethernet one. Connect that to fast ethernet zero. Again, fast ethernet two. Fast ethernet zero. And the final one, fast ethernet three. Fast Ethernet 3. We don't want to connect it to there. Okay, let's do this again. Fast Ethernet 3. And we'll come down to Fast Ethernet. Again, you can see the orange triangles. That one already went green. If I click on the Fast Forward button over here, you'll see now they're all green. Now, the point of this lesson is, can we get IP addresses on these three computers without having to set those statically? And I'll show you that. We're going to allow to set these dynamically from our DHCP server. So if we click on the first one, okay, go to desktop, go to IP config, you'll see static. Now, when you're first starting out networking, uh, many teachers will show you how to set static addresses as we do in our class. We do a lot of static addressing. But we just set a server up, a DHCP server. We want to see if that's going to work dynamically. So if I click on DHCP, you'll see that it did. 192.168.10.10. Okay, here's our gateway we set, 10.1. Here's our DNS server we set, 10.1. So you see, if you have a group of computers, you have a lot of computers in your business, you're setting these computers up. You don't want to have to go around statically assigning IP addresses. That's a nightmare. Okay. So this is already set. Okay. Matter of fact, I think what I'm going to do here, since it already got 10.10, .10, I'm just going to put a notepad next to it. 10.10. .10, okay. Just so I know what it is. And I'll show you why in just a minute. Let's go to the next computer, go back to desktop, go to IP config. See, it's, it's default to static. We're going to set it to DHCP. And sure enough, we got 192.168.10.11. Okay, we got 10.11. Let's go here. 192.168.10.11. Okay, that's that computer. Let's go to the last computer. And what IP do you think this computer is going to receive? I, I think it should receive 12 also. Let's go to DHCP. And you can see it's in, it's in numeratic order, okay? So it just goes, went 10, 11, and now 12, okay? And we'll put a notepad down here with that IP address. All right. 
So now we have IP addresses for our computers. What you want to do now is make sure that you have connectivity between your computers and your server and between each other because these computers have to talk to each other because it's a network and that's why we build networks. So if you want to click on the first computer, click on the command prompt, type in ping 192.168.10.1 because that's our server, hit enter. You'll see we are getting successful pings. Okay, that means it's communicating with that server. Next, let's go ahead and ping the computers. 192.168.10.10 or 10.11. We're on 10.10. .10. You can see where it's communicating with 10.11. If I use my up arrow key, I can go back, hit 10.12, and all the computers are actually communicating with each other at that point. Now you'll say, well, wait a minute, Jack, are you sure? Well, let's go down here to computer 12 and let's see if it's communicating. Ping 192.168.10.1, that's the server. Yeah, it's pinging just fine. Up arrow, 10.10 .10 is the top computer. Yeah, that's pinging just fine. Up here one more time, backspace, 10.11. And that's pinging just fine. So there you have it. You successfully set up a network, okay? So even if you've never had a class before, you've never taken any kind of networking classes, you've never taken any kind of server classes, Packet Tracer with this lesson just allows you to create a real working network, okay? These would be just like computers in your business over here. There could be, a, well, up to 50. That's how many hosts we set. Here's a Cisco switch. Now, we didn't do any configuration or anything to that switch. And then here's our DHCP server over here on the left, right? So it made it very easy for us to put this together and have it running, all right? So I hope this lesson helped you. And I hope you guys come back here to Jack's Photo and Tech. Uh, like I said, I'm going to try to put more series together I teach this stuff every day in school. I create videos just like this for my students. And now I want to create videos for you guys, the masses out there on YouTube. And hopefully they catch on and, and you're interested in this. Please leave comments down below on something you might want to see, something you may be struggling with, something I can help you out with, right? Anything networking, computer related or Cisco related, definitely come back here and there's going to be more videos. So please click that subscribe button and give the video a big thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you back here next time on Jack's Photo and Tech. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you then. Bye for now.